In this video, we'll take a close look at records. First, we'll briefly review how records work in databases. Then, we'll walk through all of the fields of a sample record and discuss which fields are common across most databases. Then, we'll learn about the tools that databases provide when you're viewing a record. Tools to help you share, cite, download, or request an item. Information in databases is organized using records. If you had a database of customers for your business, each entry for a customer and its accompanying information would make up a record. Each little cell in the record is called a field. So there's a field for last name, first name, city, state, number of days they've been a customer, and phone number. Each record has the same fields. This is the inner working of a simple database, just row after row of records. Thankfully, records in library databases are displayed in a user-friendly manner so that they appear sort of like a Facebook profile for the article. This is the record, and the article itself is this PDF over here. It's worth your time to learn how to glance over a record quickly instead of diving straight into a 25-page PDF. Just like you wouldn't buy anything online without first reading a description. Let's do a deep dive of a record for an article from the Journal of Research in Music Education, which is found in the database Academic Search Complete. This field tells you the title of the item, in this case, an article. This field tells you the author, or authors, in this case, it's just one person. The source field tells you where the item itself comes from. In this case, this is the title of the journal which has published the article. There's the date of publication, volume and issue number, pages, and the number of pages. Page numbers are something that I always recommend researchers take a look at, even when they're just skimming through a record. It can save a lot of time to make sure that the length matches what you're searching for. This field tells you what type of document the record is describing. It's an article in this case, but not everything in a database is an article. This field contains subject terms. Sometimes they're also called subject headings or descriptors. Really, they're just tags. Glancing over them can provide you with a quick breakdown of the article's main focus. This field shows you words that the author chose to help their article show up in keyword searches, kind of like search engine optimization, but for academic databases. This field has an abstract, which is a summary of the article. In this case, the author wrote it. Read the abstract before downloading an article and reading 20 pages. Sometimes reading an abstract can help you decide if you want to use the source for your paper or not. Authors of papers reporting on research projects will tell you the findings and outcomes of their research or experiments they conducted in the abstract. Databases don't do clickbait. Abstracts will tell you upfront what's going on in the article. This field lets you know where the author is working. Transparency is important. This field gives you the number of words in the article. Number of pages is probably a little easier to judge for most of us, but there it is if you need it. ISSN stands for International Standard Serial Number. Each periodical publication has its own number. You could copy and paste this into Google and probably learn more about the publication. It's not really something you need to keep up with. DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. Not every article has one of these, but they're often preferred by professors for citations and also some citation style guides uh, might require it. You can copy and paste the DOI into Google, and an official entry for the article, usually from the journal's website, will come up. This field has the accession number. An accession number in a database is a unique number applied to the record. If you copy and paste this into the database it came from, only this article will appear in your search results. It doesn't really mean anything outside of the database, and it's not really something you need to worry about. Not every record will have all of these fields. 
though the vast majority of records have fields for authors, source, subject terms, and usually an abstract. Now, let's focus on some of the tools the databases provide to help you explore and manage records. Databases provide a permanent link that already has Harding sign-in information attached to it. Copying and pasting these links into your address box will take you right to the record, though you may be prompted to sign into Pipeline along the way if you're off campus. If you're working on a group project, sharing a permalink is the best way to share with a partner what you've found. You can also email an article to yourself here. If you do, check your email before you navigate away from the record, just to make sure it hasn't gone into a spam folder. In our opinion, permalinks are the most reliable way to navigate back to a record. Selecting the Cite tool will help you get started on building a citation. Choose your style here, and you can copy and paste it into your draft bibliography or works cited page. Be sure to double check things, especially look at capitalization. There are other tools to explore here, but let's look over to the left side now. The PDF of the actual article is here. This article has the HTML text in the record as well, which you can see if you keep scrolling down. The PDF is what you're after though. It's much easier to read and has page numbers so that you can properly cite it. But what if there is no PDF? Many of the library's databases have records for articles that can't be immediately obtained. If there is no PDF, always select Search for Full Text. It might connect you to a PDF in another database, or it might tell you that you need to request it. The good news is that you can use the Interlibrary Loan Service to make this request and have the PDF dropped into your library account in about 24 hours to 4 days. Follow the link in the description to learn more about Interlibrary Loan. In summary, each record in an individual database generally contains the same fields. These fields help describe the record. If you're looking at a record in an unfamiliar database, start looking for fields with citation information, or an abstract, or subject terms, in order to get your bearings. Then, take a look at the tools around the record to help you cite, share, download, or request a source.